Some places, there were schools in South Korea where they made an effort to get money in order to buy books for kids. And those kids, they felt like they were taking home the best present in the mm -hmm. world. They were so proud going around there. I got a book. I got a book. This is my book. Yeah, well, you know, and, and because the parents have been similarly yeah. undereducated, they don't know the value of books. I mean, my, my parents had a high school education, but my parents and every black family I knew had the Encyclopedia Britannica, a whole set of them. And, and, and they would pay on time. They would pay a payment. The little Encyclopedia Britannica person would come to the house, and my mother would give them a check for five ten dollars and in in a year the whole set would be paid for they knew the value of having books in the house because they were instilled with the kinds of values from their parents that told them that that was important i am not so sure that parents and many of them are very young these parents are had that value system instilled in them. I, I get your point. I mean, poverty is real in this city. It is real, it is real, it is real. Um, but a lot of people um, criticize poor people, saying that somehow poverty is their fault, and that if you see a kid with new sneaks or you walk into a house of a poor person and they got a flat screen TV and the kids got cell phones and everything. But that is, poor people aspire to have what everybody else has. And because popular culture is so entrenched in this country, they feel like they're doing better if they can... In other words, their priorities are skewed. Instead of buying books for their children, a set of encyclopedias, or a computer where a kid can go online and get the encyclopedia now, they want to get them the, the, the smartphone, the sneaks, because that is a sign of success in this country. Who doesn't want to aspire to be successful? And that's how poor people aspire to be successful. I'm not just saying this, this is what research says. By buying things, status things, that speak of success. Smartphones, flat screen TVs, you know, the state of the art Nike slip uh, sneakers, you know, all this stuff that they see on TV that says success to them. So, you know, um, poverty is real and your book comment reminded me that I get all these books. I get all these books. I, and I take the books down to Mighty Writers where I do my workshop and give it to them. And, and I tell them, make sure you give the book to the kid. Just don't keep it in your library. Give it to them. Because I remember when I was a kid, and all you have to look back and, and see what gave you joy when you were a kid. Because I'm a reader and a writer, I just loved the smell of a new book. I loved how it felt. I loved how when you would open it, you know, the pages would smell a certain way and they, the pages would be all shiny and they crack open a certain way. I loved that. I loved that. And if I loved it, Another kid would love it, too. So, you know, I mean, take your books and give them to kids. <laughs> that just reminded me. Yes. Hi. Hi. I'm going to call on myself. Um, you, I think we've had a great discussion about some of the realities of poverty, and I've worked with poor families for about 20 years, so um, a lot of the points were very good about getting food and, uh, you know, having enough money to do everything that needs to be done for kids. So with some of these cuts and attacks on pretty much poor people around the country, particularly in Pennsylvania here, uh, how can we as a faith community be better advocates for the poor and better advocates for adequate services? You know, what is our role uh, as responsible people in terms of trying to turn the tide? Well, I think you guys are pretty much doing it from what I can, 
from what I can see, I mean, you know, you're, 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 you're um, demonstrating your faith through your social activism, which is what churches are charged to do. But so many churches have gotten away from that. Um, you know, there was a reason why Dr. King um, operated out of churches. You know, back then, churches were um, almost militant in the way, especially churches in the South. Not only were they safe havens, but they were the hub of social activism. We've gotten away from that. You know, there are so many beautiful edifices in the hood that are surrounded by poor people, but the members are from somewhere else. They used to live there, but they have since moved away, and they come in, they go out. Nothing they do in their ministries have anything to do with the people who are right outside their doorstep. And so I think that as a faith community, we have to become almost militant in our social activism, and we have to be more vocal. I get on black pastors on, about this all the time, about how they are not more vocal about the AIDS epidemic um, in this city, and how they've got people sitting right in their congregations who are suffering. You know, but it's like, don't ask, don't tell. You know, I'll preach about salvation, but I won't preach about, you know, exactly what we can do to save you right here on earth. And so I just think that we have to be more honest with ourselves as Christians. We have to not be afraid to get our hands dirty. You know, even in my church, and I won't even say what church it is because then you all will know. <laughs> um, when people come in who don't look quite right, you know, they don't have on the finery, or looks like maybe they just came from jail, really. And they walk in, you know, this, this is the way people go. They look, first they look like this, and then they go, huh. Like, oh, welcome. Oh, you're not quite dressed right, but welcome. <laughs> You know, we, we, we really, really, that is just so hypocritical. We have to get away from that. Can you imagine what Jesus' ministry would be? Exactly. You know, if he didn't engage the woman with the issue of blood, or he didn't engage the leper, or he didn't, you know? So... We just have to be more mindful as a faith, as communities of faith, to do that. And, um, you know, it, I guess that's it about that. <laughs> Any one last question? No. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Oh, thanks. I appreciate it. Keep reading the paper. <laughs> <laughs>